Oh, hi, and welcome to another episode of Dev Chat here at Privateer Press for November, a date, 20th. Tony moved the screens a slight bit apart so I can see the corner again. November I'm, I'm 20th, so happy. 2019. I know what day it is. Uh, I'm, I'm Will Hungerford. I'm the lead developer at Privateer Press, and mm -hmm. this is Big Papa Oz Schoonover, development manager here at Privateer Press. Sure, why not? My boss. That's my boss. And uh, we wanted to welcome all of you. If you've never joined us before, let me let you know what you're in for and what you can look forward to. So every Wednesday at 10 a.m. Pacific, outside of like holidays, we do the dev chat. That's me and you. That's what we're doing right now. We talk about the games we make, things like CID, things like Riot Quest. Today's gonna be a Monster Apocalypse themed episode and we're gonna show you some rules you haven't seen for all the upcoming mm -hmm. releases. Yep. Every Thursday at 10 a.m. we do Get Your Paint On with Jordan Lamb, our studio painter. And Jordan paints the miniatures that we make and teaches you how to paint them and you can join in and ask him about different hobby tips and tricks. And then we have two semi-regular shows, Staff Showdown, we just did one this Tuesday. Yeah, you guys just, just played again. Speaking of Jordan, uh, he wanted to talk a little bit of trash on Facebook about beating me in Riot Quest, <laughs> so I decided instead to show him uh, why you never challenge the, the designer of the game in a game that has so much luck and chaos in it. Sure. Because you'll get smoked randomly. Yeah, well, I mean, it could the have karmic, went, The karmic wheel crushed him. Could have just as easily went the other way around if his dice would have rolled good mm -hmm. ever. But it didn't. No, it didn't. And I don't care about what ifs. I feel like you, you skewed those results somehow. Intentions don't matter to me. Results are what yeah. I care about. Hobby Hangout is also another semi-regular show, which is usually some combination of Brian McLaughlin and Danny Samuels, where they go over things like building terrain and doing conversions. Brian's going to be on the 22nd with a conversion-based episode, so make sure you join in then. Mm -hmm. If you're watching us on Twitch, we're doing subscriptions. We have been for a while. Thank you for yeah. all of you that have subbed. Yeah. I see that we're being rated right now in Twitch chat. Thank you for all of you that have jumped in and started rating us. Yeah. Uh, if you haven't subbed or if your sub has lapsed, please sub with us. The more subs we get, the more emojis we unlock for your chat. Mm -hmm. We are almost at 120 subs, at which point we will unlock the Riot Quest loot coin as the next yeah. emoji. And keep in mind, the emojis on the screen right now are not the only emojis that we have available, because as we get more and more and more, we're not gonna squeeze them all on that piece of art. And the uh, donut factory is not on that art, but is available. Yeah. Also remember, if you are using your Prime subscription, it does expire every month. And you can just go back in and click it again and give it back to us. It's true. We, we appreciate that. Yeah. That is the thing. Yeah. Uh, before we get into today's topics, let's go through the news. The news being Mini Crate. So we have a new Mini Crate model for War Machine Hordes. We have the Disco mm -hmm. Infernal, mm -hmm. a new Dark Sentinel for your cultist units. Mm -hmm. She is fancy and deadly. And I'm waiting to see some really cool lighting effects come off that oh, Disco yeah. Ball onto yeah, the yeah. model. I'm sure we're going to get some people that, that do real, you know, pro-level painting here. Uh, if you sign up for the VIP between now and the end of the year, we've got a special deal. You won't just get one Trancer Dancer, you will get two Trancer Dancers. So any VIP subscription between now and the end of the year is going to receive two Trancer Dancers in the next shipment when they go out. Mm -hmm. Over on the L5R side of things, we have a brand new model in Miramoto Prodigy that's available till my birthday, December 5th. And there is a new VIP model as well until like May 5th. Oh yeah, it's, so, it's, it's a while on that one. It just started. That is uh, Tingu Sensei, which is available if you do a six month sub for the L5 Art Mini Crate. Over on the Savage Mini Crate. This is the best one ever. The this, is my, this is my favorite. The Serpent Man is, is phenomenal. So uh, Serpent Man available till December 12th. And of course King Conan is still here till January 12th. Mm -hmm. All right, that's the news, Tony. Star Wipe, no Star oh, Wipe. Oh, it was the logo wipe. He can't star wipe it all the time. We, we star wipe at the beginning and the end. Oh. It's like the both times when you're not really looking at it. So, so sorry. It's okay. So it's okay. I will never be mad at you because I love you too much. Uh, so we're going to be talking about Monpoc mainly today. But mm -hmm. there's a couple things to talk about War Machine very briefly. Uh, CID got extended. We made some minor changes at the beginning of this week at cid.privateerpress.com. Mm -hmm. This is the convergent CID. Um, we were thinking two weeks originally. We're going to give it a through the weekend to test some of these additional changes. Uh, so if you've got any thoughts, any final sort of battle reports you want to get mm -hmm. in, jump in. We're shutting it all down on Monday. Yeah, but so, that'll give people the weekend to play some more last minute games. Yes, but for anyone doing battle reports over the weekend, I do want to say get them in by Monday morning uh, at the absolute latest because probably around 9 or 10 a.m. Pacific on Monday morning, 
uh, I'm going to slam my head into the giant red button that says off, oh. and the CID is going to not be there anymore. Be careful with that button. Eh. Uh, I'm, I'm more, important, more importantly, don't break the button. Do whatever you want with your face, but sure. don't break that button. We need that button to work. No, the button's fine. Yeah. Uh, also, uh, I did something a bit strange mm -hmm. uh, on Facebook. So we've got a dynamic update in the works. We're, we're, we're kind of nearing the end of it on our end, and then it goes yeah. through editing, and then it goes through layout, and then it goes live. We're trying to get it out by the end of this year. Um, there is a change in it that I wanted a little bit more feedback on in more than just the internal playtesting and a few external bits. Uh, and that was a change coming to Burrow, which affects the pig burrowers and the hell divers for now. Yeah. But Burrow, if working properly and if engaging and fun, could maybe retroactively end up on a few things and could definitely be on a few things going forward. Um, this didn't warrant a full CID and I did yeah. not want to detract from the convergence CID happening. So took a little bit of an alternate route uh, and went on Facebook in the War Machine and Hordes Facebook general group and made this giant post with the new proposed rules. Uh, if you haven't seen it, go check it out. If you want to see what the new borough might look like and what it's going to do, uh, it's there, all the text, and you can provide some feedback and your thoughts. Mm -hmm. So do it soon because we're going to try and get this dynamic update rolling as soon as we possibly can. Yeah, and for can. anybody asking about what else is in this dynamic update, it's mostly Oblivion stuff. Any, any typos or that kind of stuff in Oblivion, and a few other things like that. But well, the big chunk of it is because we want to do something to catch anything that was weird about Oblivion. It's, it's, it's kind of three categories, right? Like there's the, the everything you just said, the giant yeah. Oblivion type. There's, so there's the errata part of it, mm -hmm. and then there's the balance update part. The errata part is just Oblivion stuff, stuff that was yeah. wrong. You know, the fact that like the Grimkin Arcana Desolation still says hills in it, which hills don't exist, things yeah. like that. Uh, then there are two models getting toned down very gently. We're calling this the reset the clock dynamic update for no reason. Uh, we are? I eh, hadn't heard that yet. Eh. Uh, and then there is a very focused uh, balance update that is a lot of buffs. Um, and the way we're approaching things is we try, we don't like to nerf things. You know, we, we, we don't want to, mm -hmm. but if things prove out to be too much of a problem, we're going to, and the approach we want to take is to do slight, slight nerfs. Uh, not, not smash anything into the ground. So there's going to be two items that are going to come down a little bit. And then we test a very specific thing, sometimes just a theme force, for example, uh, that's in a faction that we feel we want to bring parts of that faction up. And bringing those models up, usually units and solos, but sometimes beasts will, will help mm -hmm. throughout. So I, would, I can just go ahead and say it now. I'm just going to say oh, really? it. Really? Yeah. Whatever. I'll just do what I want. Uh, there's going to be a very Creole company focused uh, set of buffs. Uh, when I say that, I mean expect a lot of troll blood buffs. Two models that work in Crow Company, uh, specifically a lot of the infantry. Uh, I think this was kind of becoming apparent when I made the burrow post and I said in the burrow post, by the way, if you're messing with pig burrowers, also just for no reason imagine that they're rat five. Uh, yeah. So we looked at Creole Company uh, and have been doing a lot of testing with it and the things that work for it. That doesn't mean that we're done with, say, trolls as a whole. So say this update comes out, it's got a bunch of troll things, and uh, you're like, well, I think that this in troll should have been fixed. Maybe it does get changed later. Um, just because we touch a portion of a faction in a dynamic update doesn't mean that we're like, oh, this faction's done. Yeah. It's just very specifically aimed at this one or two theme forces, or this almost like block. Like if we were ever to say go through like, oh, this faction's entire jacks or beasts. It'd be yeah. that kind of yeah. thing. Not the entire faction top to bottom, but simply put, with Riot Quest, Mompok, Warcaster, War Machine, and all the things we've got going on, and doing this internally, mm -hmm. we don't want to try and take on more than we can chew at a time when we're doing it internally and then end up making mistakes. It's better to stay focused and sort of in on a, a small block at a time and try and do it right. So. Mm -hmm. And somebody was asking uh, if we had any timing for the next CID. We don't right now. Um, like we always say, CIDs are scheduled by production, mm -hmm. and we've been doing things in blocks. And so all of this convergence stuff is a, is a, a, a chunk of releases. I'm trying not to promise actual times. Sure, yeah. Because, you know, things move around sometimes. So the, when, the, when we get figured out exactly what the release schedule for the next chunk of models is, then we'll build the CID schedule around that. And we'll tell you in advance when CID is coming. But right now we don't have anything to say about the next one because we're still wrapping up this one. 
And uh, just to Twitch chat, just to kind of be transparent here, I see like Christopher Tyson on Facebook says, Legion love, please. There are definitely some things in Legion um, um, I've got on my mind that I want to change, but we need to do a lot of internal testing and run it through the, you know, kind of run it through its paces. Um, yeah. So like there won't be any Legion things in this next dynamic update. Again, when you see dynamic updates and you see groups of buffs, they're all going to be really focused on one, one thing. So if Legion gets buffs, it would be kind of a dynamic update just for Legion and probably just one or two specific oh. aspects of it. So uh, that's all I want to say about War Machine. This is your show now. We're talking Mon -Pac? Mon -Pac. Monster Apocalypse. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're going to talk about December releases today. Uh, nobody, I believe, has seen any of these cards because they were just made recently. Sweet. So I don't think they've been previewed I haven't even way. seen the final versions. Yes. Yeah, yeah, you saw the playtest versions of it. Well, we had those chats very early on. But oh, yeah. then like, yeah. there was Warfare Weekend and Riot Quest and War Machine, and mm -hmm. I haven't even seen where you've, you so, ended up. So December is going to be Pterosaurs and Martians, very much like last December was. Mm -hmm. And they're getting a unit blister and a monster for each of those two factions. So we're going to start out with Pterosaur units. Sure. Because I want to tease people and not just do the monster first. <laughs> okay, so you do the, you, boo. The main pterosaur unit in coming out in their blister is a bunch of bellowers. Mm -hmm. So bellowers are a new ranged attack unit in the faction. They are a primary range attack unit, which the faction didn't have before. They had the spikedon, but they didn't have mainline they things. They had raptics and caradons, which are melee units, but they didn't have anything that that could pile up a bunch of shots. They have something. a cost one range. Even. Yeah, yeah. So these guys basically scream at things. I just imagine, you know, the screaming Look all the time. That boy is chunky. Yeah, yeah, they're, they're, they're basically about the same kind of chunkiness as a Carnadon, mm -hmm. but instead of being all about biting and scratching and all that stuff, they just scream a lot. You'll also notice they have a, a really good support ability in Disruption, yeah. which Protectors haven't had on a unit so far. They've had Defender X's Disruption, but uh, Destroyers had Squicks since the beginning, and now Protectors are getting a unit that can sprinkle some Disruption across the board. What's interesting, and maybe I shouldn't call this out, but I'm gonna. Uh, the Brawl says... Uh, blue Zero? I mm -hmm. thought if there was a... I thought it was just you didn't show a blue die if there wasn't one. Or that, am I... It doesn't matter either way. Okay. Yeah. We, we, uh, we, we're shaking out some new things about layout and stuff. Okay. So is that zero, the zero or a nothing there, they both mean the same thing. They mean the same thing. Yeah. Okay. Well, I, yeah. people might ask. Yeah. I mean, I know I'm asking. So, mm -hmm. so these guys do have a melee attack. It's, a, it's an inconsequential melee attack in most circumstances. But with certain buffs on the table, you can, you can make them fight better in melee. But their main thing is is yelling at people from range. His, his hands are disgusting. They're fine, they're just like weird little uh, lizard people hands. Yeah, those are filthy. Okay, let's move on. Okay, so and um, as a mainline fighter, they are also getting a elite. Yeah. So just like normal, the elite has commander, it gives them plus one blue die, it has those blue dice itself. Pretty straightforward elite stuff. Seems good. Yeah. So, in the near future, you'll be able to have swarms of shooty pterosaur things on your side of the table. Or your opponent's side of the table, I guess, depending on what you're fighting. And definitely has a different place in the protector agenda than, say, like, G-Tanks. And oh, other, yeah. And other yeah, mainline yeah. shooty, you know. Yeah. Because that's the thing. You can't, like, overlap too, too much. But oh, yeah. these guys with disruption do a very different job. Mm -hmm. Cool. And then the specialist in that blister pack is the pterodactics. Not to be confused with the monster, Pterodax. They are very related, so their names are similar, mm -hmm. but these guys have a, a couple extra syllables. And this is a cheap support unit. So usually there's a specialist in the pack, and usually it costs two, but every once in a while we do cost one specialist. And this is one of those. So there's not going to be an elite Pterodactyx. In the, in the old first edition of the game, there were elite right. Pterodactyx because they were another mainline unit. But for this edition, we're making this guy a specialist. So the most important thing about it is toe. Oh, you went with the version I, I recommended. That's awesome. What, what version is that? 
where they can't move after. Oh, they, yeah. After uh, after some initial playtesting. Yeah, because it was. We decided it that was silly. This should be a lot like a lot of other abilities, and it shouldn't let you move afterwards. Also, now, it's allied, not just uh, oh, yeah. faction yeah. Or, now, which is awesome. Mm -hmm. So uh, this little guy can fly around. He's uh, speed five, so he's not the fastest flyer in the entire world, but sure. but have ability in flight lets him get in a lot of places. And then once he's done moving, he can tow someone else into a advantageous position. Yeah, it's really good. Yeah. And also, he's a cost one grunt. Like you said, he's not the fastest thing, but he does have just one blue, like two yeah. pterodactics will walk up and yeah. just punch a bra. They've got very average attack stats because they are mostly a support model. But yeah, to toe is super, super yeah. good. The other important thing this gives for the uh, pterosaurs in general is they haven't had a flying thing before. Mm -hmm. So if you want to secure a building that had water on the corner or whatever, if you want to get one of those double secures where there's like a water space, then you had to go outside of faction to get a flying model. So this, this guy offers a lot of support and that kind of stuff. And he's deaf too, which is pretty good defense for a flying thing. It's not, yeah, I mean, it's, they're usually one or two. They're, they're usually one or two. Are there any deaf three flyers? I don't think there's any yeah, deaf three there are. flyers. Cool. But yeah, that's the, that's the Pterosaur unit blister, which is coming out in December. And then their monster is Pterodactyx, which is a very... It's Pterodax. I'm just sorry. Is, I get it backwards, back and forth all the time. Is Pterodax, which is a big flying dinosaur. So Pterodactyx is speed seven. Pterodax. Ter sorry. I'm going to do it every time. I'm going to do it every time. Pterodax. Pterodax. I'll just remember. It's, it's all good. Yeah. I'll just, I'll just Pterodax jump is in. Speed seven. Um, and... High mobility and flight. So this is a very, very mobile, fast monster. Mm -hmm. He also, we'll see his hyper in a couple seconds, but he also only has 10 hit points total, so his defense is a little higher yeah, than dude. the average monster. So def 9 with only 10 hit points. He has toe as well. He does have toe as well. So this is a really good pair to put up with Terracon, because Terracon wants Pterosaur units positioned in the right place, for his feeding frenzy ability. Yes. And this monster is another way to get units moved around the table during your monster activation. Being able to tow an elite Carnodon next to Terracon mm -hmm. for a flank and then triggering feeding frenzy, yeah. it seems super good. Now it's not as easy to do as Zor, Zor, Zor Maxim mm -hmm. and the teleport ability, because teleport can pull something from anywhere on the table as long as it's adjacent to a teleporting model. Right, right. This guy needs it to be within five of him, but it's still a lot of positioning shenanigans you could pull off. He's got average brawl and power attacks for an alpha, and then he has energy sap on his blast, which is pretty cool. It, it, it basically shows that he's throwing enough wind around that it, it disturbs the other monster, and it's like, basically, you can imagine the other monsters having to lean in to get like close to things, mm. and it pushes action dice. Cool. So it moves an action die from the monster pool to the unit pool, hampering your opponent's activity on their next monster Which is turn. good when you get to those turns where somebody's spending like two action die a turn and they get yeah. down to having like three or two yeah. or three in their pool. Or if they have left one yeah. in their monster pool to be able to move their monsters during a turn even if they're not planning to attack with them and you can knock it out of there and prevent them from getting a monster turn. So it's dangerous to leave one die in your pool against Pterodax. What does his high perform do? His high perform is right there. So he loses toe. Sure. Because he's, free, he's freaking out. Yes. But he picks up rapid fire. So not only is he flapping air at you with his wings, but he's flapping a lot of air at you with his wings. Sure. And he has penetration and, now blast. And his blue dice don't go up in this form. Sure. But he has penetrator, which, which is, is basically a, blue, a, a, a red die. But he has, a, he has airdrop on his power attacks, which is has, new. And he has airdrop, which is a bonus to his throws. Right, because he's grabbing you and yeah. flying with you yeah. and, and dropping you off. Mm -hmm. What is the bonus? The bonus is plus two range on throws. So nice. if you want to throw someone seven spaces, you can only roll five red dice to throw them seven spaces. That seems really good. It's pretty good. Yeah. And Tony, go back to his alpha for one second. He also has sidestep in both forms. I wanted to mention that real oh. fast. So sidestep at def nine is pretty good, which means if he gets missed, he can advance three spaces, mm -hmm. so he's a little bit uh, dangerous to attack with like units and stuff. If you're not completely sure you're going to make it, I like him. He seems just good all the way around, mm -hmm. and he's like a solid addition to pterosaurs that yeah. that adds a bunch of new stuff to him. 
I, for some reason, have in my head, looking out my, my house, opening my window. Oh. And the monster apocalypse is real. Yeah, of And Pterodax is carrying Olgoth. That's, ooh, that's weird. Yeah, and it's just, just you know, big jellyfish monster in the air flying mm-hmm. by, and there's all these weird gribblies falling off of it. But Olgoth is hard to throw. Exactly. So he would have, he would have a harder time grabbing That's the thing, he's all like, you know, talents. it's like trying to throw a jello pudding. Mm-hmm. You know, you just grab a hold of it, you're like, oh, God. And then uh, Tony has a special, a special camera for us. Oh, today. are we going to show the model? Yeah, we're going to show this, this model too. Okay, so this is Pterodax. I'm going to say his name right for the rest of the show. <laughs> it's the last time you're going to talk about him too. I don't know. I might say it ten more times. So yeah, large, large pterodactyl monster person. Pterodax, um, c- considerably thinner. <laughs> Than the other two pterosaur monsters. Yeah. Armadax is pretty beefy and Terracon's pretty chunky too. It's hard to fly so, when you're chunky. Yeah, yeah. Can you imagine Armadax with wings? Like nothing's gonna happen. Mm. Maybe, maybe he just hover. Like they'd be <laughs> going real fast. <laughs> like a hummingbird. Yeah, yeah, get off the ground by. Like his toenails will be dragging. Oh. So yeah, so that's Pterodax coming Sweet. out in December. And then the other side of things are the Martians. Yeah, the bad guys. Yeah. So the Martians are getting a unit blister too. And their main line thing in this unit blister is something that's on the ground. They're finally getting a brawl unit. They're getting a brawl unit for one thing, but second-wise, they're getting something that's on the ground that isn't a power pod. Yes. Because all of the previous Martian releases were flying things, so their def were pretty low. And this gives them a ground unit, so it's going to have higher def in general than a flying thing. And it has force field, which kind of makes it a G-tank. Kind of. Kind of. That gives it uh, def four against blasts and def five with cover against blasts because force field and cover stack, stack on top of each other. Yeah. So this gives destroyers in general and Martians particularly a really good way to hold territory. So Martians were not good at holding territory and destroyers in general didn't have anything that kind of acted like a G tank. Mm-hmm. And this gives them that tanky option. Also has all terrain because it's got legs that can crawl around top of trees and over rubble piles. And it can stuff. also roll red dice. And um, power hitter, which originally appeared on the assault tapes in the protector side, mm-hmm. is on this model too. Because Martians are a power dice themed faction. Mm-hmm. Their building gives you power dice back and they right. have the power pods and that kind of stuff. So these guys also have the ability to use power dice, which is really handy if your opponent is inside your base and a bunch of these guys can swarm him because you should have pretty good power production as a Martian player and with other models. So you can throw a whole bunch of red dice into an attack against the monster and hit it. Yeah. But just like power hitter on everything else, it, if you kill a unit with it, you don't get the, an extra power die. I, mean, I think it's really good for combined attacks on monsters. Yeah. Like you take your unit turn, everybody gets a position, you do a combined, three of these guys on a monster, they throw a red die in, you have mm-hmm. an elite nearby, then your monster turn comes up and like you said, Martians are really good at generating power. So it's mm-hmm. not like you're, you're not wasting those red dice yeah. on, to hit an enemy monster. You're going to get them right back. Yeah. And another thing, um, we're going to do a, a not really dynamic update, but a standard errata FAQ kind of thing at the beginning of the year. Yeah. I'm not going to promise a date for it, but I'm aiming for January. And in that FAQ and errata, we're going to take the word monster out of the Martian building energy cycle ability, okay. the resource domination ability. Because right now, when I wrote that ability, I didn't imagine that anything besides monsters would ever roll red dice. Mm, I see. So that saying. says if you roll more than two or more red dice during a monster attack, you can get one back. And now we have a unit on both sides that can roll red dice. Got and it. it's a Martian thing and you know, all the themes of Martians. So we're going to just pull the word monster out of that ability. So it's not going to change drastically. Will it's there, just going to be more applicable. Will there be any other balance updates? Included? There might be a couple of other things. There's a few typos in the game. I'm not looking at very many balance things for that. And I've talked about this on Minor Report and other places. We're looking at more balance stuff for the Crush Hour rules, which might also come out around the beginning of the year. Okay. But um, for that FAQ and errata thing, more than likely it's just little typos and those kind of things. Cool. And then the, uh, the Reapers get an Elite because they are a mainline fighting thing. So boop. A commander, pretty standard stuff. And then they get a really weird specialist. What is their weird specialist? It is the Harvester. It is like a super saucer that's kind of an Ares mothership. It's like a little baby Ares mothership. 
Well, it's got abduct, which is abduct three. It's got abduct three. Wow. So that's b between the two on the saucers and the four on Aries. It's got manufacture. It's got manufacture. Wow. So it punches things and turns them into Martians, just like Ares. And, then it and makes, like the Snatchers. It makes other people's abduct better? And then it makes everybody else's abduct better if it's on the table. That makes Ares Mothership's abduct five? Yeah, but there's nothing with a five that you can abduct. Because you can't abduct buildings. You can only abduct units. If you could abduct buildings, I, I Ares could just, just, like, just eat apartments. Oh. But, but no, there's the, the abduct, abduct rule says unit, not model. I want to abduct apartment buildings. Not yet. Okay. Maybe someday. But, so, uh, the, these things are pretty handy for abducting because with your saucers, you could only hit two. And a two is most flying things and most fast things, mm -hmm. but it's not the more standard things like the like the Reapers and the Bellowers and those kind of things. There's a lot of models in the game that are three def, and this this model can abduct them, and more importantly, this model boosts up your saucers to make them more dangerous. So it's kind of like an elite saucer, sure, functionality wise, but it's not because saucers don't have attacks. He kind of looks like a little crab. In fact, he's a little bit crabby. He's like a kidnap crab. He's like a kidnap crab. Yeah, little kidnap crab. Mm -hmm. Just comes out, hey kids, mm -hmm. yoink. Yeah, and it's, it's got high mobility flight at speed five, so it can get around. Its def is only two, so it's not, it's not gonna survive a lot of shots. But, but yeah, it's, and it's got a little gun just for some added functionality. Sure, <laughs> just in case it needs to shoot somebody? Yeah, just in case. I mean, there's a lot of other guns in the Martian faction, so having this guy be able to throw in on a, a big combined attack to get one more blue die for one more white die is pretty handy. This thing is really good. It's pretty cool. No, this thing is really good. Mm -hmm. Like being able to walk up, abduct something off a of PowerPoint, punch another guy and manufacture something. Yeah, it's, it, well, it's so that's, that's gameplay that Ares has had for the whole time. Yeah. Ares could walk up and punch something on a PowerPoint, turn it into one of your things, and then abduct something else or whatever. Right. Functionality. But now you get it on a unit. Now you get it on a unit. It is cost two and it's not super fast, so it's going to be a little difficult to get across the table. But, sure. but yeah, if you can get this into your opponent's power production, then you can really mess them up. But manufacture is just what bad guys do. Like the Snatchers recently came out for Cthulhu, yeah. and Ares has had it for the whole time, and Olgoth has it too, so there's a lot of manufacture on the bad guy side. Someday maybe the good guys will get manufactured, but thematically it's much more of a, I, I touch you and you become evil kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. So uh, they also get a monster in Tharsis V, the weirdest of all the Martian oh, This monsters. thing looks so bizarre. It's a weird looking thing. So it's kind of, it's kind of crabby also. That's some rules. Uh-huh. So it's because of nano construction. Nano construction is a long rule because it, it contains the text of repair. Because this is giving destroyers repair. It's the biggest deal on this model. Okay, so it's got repair. It's got repair, so it can repair things. And then nano construction itself. says? It says um, allied faction units without flight. So Reapers and Power Pods. Okay, Reapers and Power Pods, they gain repair. Can gain repair. Got it. So this means if your Power Pod is sitting on the backfield and somebody knocks the building down next to it, it can just put that building back. Okay. Now it's more important on Reapers because Reapers are a little bit more quick and they tend to move around the table more than Power Pods. Power Pods tend to sit still and not do anything else. But that Power Pod repair is there in case you need it. And then as an added bonus, he has Rampager. Rampager is when you rampage, you get a bonus red die for everything you kill. So buildings and units. So he wants to rampage through buildings, knock them down, and then repair them with. And then possibly repair them behind him. Yeah. And he's also got disintegrate he's on got his range five weapon. So this guy Whew. is a building monster. So like I've talked about, Olgoth in the past is a unit monster. Yeah. Olgoth is all about units. Tharsis is all about buildings. Tharsis can keep the buildings that you want on your side of the table sure. and destroy the foundations of buildings on your opponent's side of the table. Okay. So let's say your opponent brought a guard base for mm -hmm. that reroll, and you don't want them to have that guard base. Yeah. So you go over there and you zap the guard base with this model and it can't be repaired where it was because there's not a debris tile there. So this is basically a terraforming monster. It's basically a terraforming monster. I got it. Yeah. Okay. So. Uh, there, there was, when I originally teased some of the abilities on Tharsis, there was some, some conversation out there about disintegrate versus repair and how they kind of counteract each other. Mm. But it's all about positioning and the toolbox. Because you don't want your opponent to have 
repair options that are easy, right. and you want repair options. But, so you're never going to zap a building on your side of the table you with shouldn't. that disintegrate, yeah. because that will just remove your options. But where your opponent's got key buildings, <coughs> and especially if they have if they have repair and they have a double foundation that they're keeping going, mm -hmm. you can knock it out by disintegrating it. And this gives Martians even more disintegration because the vanguards have it, and it gives destroyers even more disintegration because a couple of the planet eater monsters have it. So there's a lot of disintegration on the destroyer side now. This guy's weird, but I love him. Yeah. What does he um, do? What does he do in his hyperform? And then in his hyperform, he gets beat back on his big giant weird fists. Okay, so he looks like he basically he he, he, he loses personal repair, but he keeps nano construction. And he picks up armored, which is that he's with, immune he to damage from collision with armored. buildings. What have you done? So he's got he's so both the Reapers and him have these weird force field generators. Yes. And the Reapers use it to just get a, a death against blasts. Mm -hmm. But Tharsis, when he gets real desperate, turns on his force fields that prevent him from getting damaged by buildings. So he picks up beat back now. So he goes hyper. His mm -hmm. guys, his, his Reapers and his power pods can make buildings for him to then beat back the enemy into to do more damage. And mm -hmm. then on their go, when they pick him up and throw him into buildings, mm -hmm. he doesn't take damage from hitting those buildings that he keeps repairing to beat them back into. Yeah, so he's a building monster, like I said. And the most important thing about this is this is the first destroyer with armor. Armored Axe has it. Sure. Uh, Hondo has it in alpha form. But no destroyer's ever had armor before. This guy seems And baller. it's late game armored, which is weirder, because Armored Axe has it all the time, and Alpha Hondo has it, so his armor gets torn off. But this is desperation force field time on Tharsis. So there's not necessarily a lot of buildings to get thrown into mm -hmm. late in the game, depending on when you go hyper. Unless you're playing this dude and constantly repairing him. Unless you're doing this kind of thing. And then Tony, go back to his alpha real fast. So one of the other things that uh, you'll notice is he's only 11 hit points. He's not a 12. He's, he's tankier sure. than other monsters. Yeah, but he's got armor, which helps. Which is, ar yeah. But he's not 12 hit points, or the possible higher than that hit points that a monster might have soon have in the future. Do you think that a Tharsis versus Armadax 1v1 monster game, if started today, <laughs> would end by lock and load? Um, yes. Yes. It, well, it depends. <laughs> so, uh, Armadax could have repair trucks, mm -hmm. so there could be repair on both sides. Right. But repair trucks are pretty easy to remove. Yes. But Tharsis, you can't just be like, that's the unit with repair, I zap it. If the Tharsis player has six Reapers on the table, Correct. there's six things it can repair. Yeah. Now, and also, always keep in mind, you can't do the same action twice. But with a Statue of Liberty, two of those Reapers could repair in the same turn. Ooh. And, and the, the, the basically, the vectors of that repair are much more difficult to handle when you're talking about Martians than you're talking about with protectors. Got it. And then, of course, we have because, because Tony set up our little camera, we have the Tharsis model. It's super weird. So um, the other thing we didn't mention is Tharsis does have high mobility because it's hovering on the weird little power cone that Martians like to do. Uh, and it's, but it's, it's the super weirdest model. I, I've always like, loved this model because it's just so weird. Like looking looking at this part, like the the head up from, uh -huh. from straight on, I feel like this just got unleashed out of like a, a jar and is now fighting Power Rangers. It, and, I mean, yeah, it's got a little bit of that going on. But yeah, but I've always liked that. Like it kind of looks like its arms are on tips, and it's just weird. And then I decided, um, if you you might have been able to see the details, I decided these great big things on this back are the missiles that disintegrate buildings. Like, the, that's fruit. these are big giant energy. Nope. Blobs that fire off and... Nope, those are avocados. I mean, they could... No, a little pointy for avocados. Well, they're I've alien seen, avocados. I've, I've, maybe. Maybe. But yeah, there you go. So that's Tharsis. And both these monsters... Let me make them... Make them fly a little bit. Both these <laughs> monsters will be coming out in December with their units for Monster Apocalypse. I love that... So if somebody walks up and they see this game for the first time and they go back to that... Tony, if you could bring up the, the cam shot one more time real fast. And we're like, this is a game about giant monsters. They're like, ah, cool. I know exactly what this model is. I've watched a lot of old kaiju. Like, ah, yeah. sweet. And then they look at Tharsis and they're like, what is, what is happening yeah. here? It's weird. What, what is it's this? It's Martian, though. It's Martian. Well, and we, and we did the, the classic. We have a flying saucer with the mothership. Yeah. And we have a tripod. And we have the giant walker. With Demos, because tripods are also a very classic thing for yeah. the worlds and stuff. But this is pushing that Martian aesthetic 
in the weirdest direction. But it still looks the same. It's got this face plate that Demos oh, kind of has. And if you if you play Martians, it is definitely Martian. You're just like, yeah. where are your arms? I'm just way down, way down here on the bottom. I punch you with them and knock you around. Those are arms. Those are arms. Yeah, they're claws. Yeah, yeah. Those little griblies? Yeah, those are gribbly claws. Big gribbly claws. Great big giant ones. All right then. Fair yeah. enough. Yeah. So all this is coming out next month. All this is December. Sweet. Yes. Sweet. Was there any other mom pox stuff coming up we needed to talk about? All right. Well, I mean, we don't we don't need to talk about it. <laughs> we don't. We can we don't. talk about it. Well, why don't we do chat for a little bit? Yeah. And uh, let's see if anybody in chat has any questions about the cool monster apocalypse stuff we've shown off, or any questions about the machine. Ryan well, West. avocados are cheap in Canada. That's what the chat just told me. That's cool. So Twitch and Facebook, we're going to give it a second. We're in a little bit of a delay, so we'll see if any mm -hmm. questions pop up. Mm -hmm. uh, so, oh, yeah, that's something we did not bring up. G Gypsy Tronic says, uh, can two harvesters affect each other and give them each yeah. abduct four? So the rule on the harvester says other models with abduct so, yes. get plus one to their limit. So, yeah. so if you have two harvesters, they're both fours. But that's, that's pretty easy to remove. And it's pretty expensive. That would cost you four to spawn that. Or just manufacture them. Or you can, man yeah, one harvester can manufacture another harvester. Yeah, yeah, one harvester walks up, kills something, manufactures another harvester, therefore giving the first one a duck four, mm -hmm. and then you yoink up the thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's ways to do that, it. That's easy to do. That's trivial. I don't know if it's trivial. Punch a bro. It depends on what you punch. If you punch a jet for this one death, sure. Harvest, harvesters turn jets into whatever they want all day long. <laughs> all nonsense. But if you're trying to go after a G tank, it, the harvester itself has two whites and two blues. So that's not going to average a four very often. Like that's that's a that's a really hard four to get, not a not an easy four. Uh, let's see. Next question. Uh, I know today is Monster Apocalypse theme, but I have to ask, what is the chances of a strange light Jack? Uh, I wouldn't expect one for some time. Yeah. Maybe. I mean, there is in the fiction of the strange light, there is a haunted war Jack, but. Yeah. But we would have to bring Strange Light into the miniatures game in some capacity for that to ever happen. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, Pat on Facebook says, "Is there a date to update the War Machine card database and version list?" Thanks. I know the card database is in the process of being updated right now by our IT team on a few different things, getting the cards out there. Yep. Uh, the version list might be a little bit longer. Well, the version list, the main function of the version list is when a dynamic update happens. It lists all the older models that were changed. Mm -hmm. Generally, if a new model comes out, there's only one version of that card, so you don't need to reference the, the, the list for that. But yeah, we, we are in the process of getting all that stuff up to date. Uh, Power Gorge wants to know, and I don't know, so maybe you do, uh, is Tharsis's arms separate from the body? I do not know what this model is like in engineering. I'm guessing that those arms are separate just because of the directions of flow of resin and things, but I, I've never seen a Tharsis that wasn't a 3D print, so I don't know how they're engineering it. Right. I know that they're, that they're in the process and it's probably already mastered and stuff, but I haven't seen it yet. Uh, Mark Iwanek on Facebook says, any new info about the future of uh, Zero Junior Caster Warlocks uh, for Hordes? Well, I can tell you that I just uh, pitched a bunch of stuff to Wilson that basically got approved. Uh, there's going to be some Hordes goodness coming next year. Mm -hmm. None of it is zeros, though. Um, but don't worry, you won't be disappointed. There's some really, really cool things coming up. So um, Dragon Pup wants to know when Ubercorp gets a robot shark monster. Um, there'd have to be a normal shark monster before they get a robot shark, because that's the way. They, they, they copy things. And there is a shark monster coming yeah. on the Tritons side of things. The, uh, the big armored hammerhead shark, yeah. Leviathron, he looks is kinda, on the way. He looks really, really cool. Which is the monster I was talking about might have more than 12 hit points. Um, let's see if we have any other questions that we want to hit. I oh, don't see any other ones we need to get right now or that we can. There's a couple like customer service questions. Somebody was asking about payments on Mini Crate, yeah. but we unfortunately don't know. We yeah. don't have any of the answers there. Riker's so. Iron is talking about the background art, but I don't know what model that we're talking about that's back there. Uh, Cooney Man wants to know, are there any themes in Kador getting a review in the dynamic update? No, the dynamic update, the buffs are primarily troll focused. Uh, I will say there is a change to one model, the Doom Reaver Escort, the Raylord Escort, 
is picking up Doom Reaver and its subtype. Because mm -hmm. as it stands, currently, when you add a Grey Lord Escort to a Doom Reaver unit, it's no longer a Grey Lord unit or a Doom Reaver unit because it's not fully both. Therefore, the benefit in Wolves of Winter that says pick a Grey Lord or Doom Reaver unit to give Apparition mm -hmm. for the turn, you can't choose a Doom Reaver unit with a command attachment. That's dumb as hell. So we're going to fix that. The smallish side buff is that um, Fenris's Rise works on escorts now. Not that it's super relevant, but it will be a thing. Uh, Dragon Pup asks the weirdest question possible. Right. Are space dragons literally dragons from space? Yes. They're called space dragons. They have a real faction name, which we'll announce later. But they're space dragons, so that means they're dragons from space. It's pretty straightforward. It is. Uh, Riker Zion wants to know if there is a special Winter Rampage Monpok-related uh, event. Uh, there is not. And uh, Anthony wants to know, when are we going to start talking about Warcaster? Not... Well, Matt went on and did an interview with Minority Report and talked about Warcaster. He did. He talked a little bit about it. But we're not talking about it. Yeah. No. We will talk about it when we are allowed to talk about it. Yeah. And we're, right now, we're the, not. For, for mainline marketing things like, like these streams, we're a little ways out. But we will be talking about it soonish. Just no promises on when that'll be. Yep. 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 Uh, and I think that hits just about everything that we wanted to get to. So we'll go ahead and start wrapping it up. Mm -hmm. Everybody, thanks for hanging out. Thanks for talking about Monpoc with all of us. Join us on the 22nd again, by the way, for the Hobby Hangout with Brian McLaughlin. We will see you next week, probably. Next week is Thanksgiving. Uh, so we won't be doing Get Your Paint On until Thursday, because that's and, Thanksgiving. And I won't be here Wednesday, so I'm not going to be on this. We will let you know if Dev yeah. Chat is happening. Dev Chat right now is a big question mark of whether or not it will occur, or if there will be anybody even in the office. If and not... Everybody, we'll be home cooking turkeys. We could be home cooking turkeys. Also, someone, uh, uh, Power Gorge, asked about uh, the Triton Crab stats. Mm -hmm. Triton Crabs are January release, so that means we'll probably talk about them in December. Yep. If we don't see you next week, those of you celebrating Thanksgiving, have a happy Thanksgiving. Uh, get full, enjoy life, mm -hmm. and we'll see you soon. Goodbye. Goodbye, Fairman. Jesus. <laughs> I mean, I mean, for two weeks. <laughs>